The B770 is imminent. We're gonna start going laptops with plasma and there might be a GPU shortage. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, January 5th, 2026. And as you can tell, I'm not at my normal studio in South Africa. Instead, we are here at CES 2026, trying to cover everything. And turns out our hotel room has a nice view of the sphere in the background. So you get to enjoy that whenever it's my talking face on the screen right now. And I'm hopefully gonna be enjoying the B. 770 sometime soon because Intel themselves putting on their GitHub the B770 in an indicator of their Battle Mage GPUs. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see an announcement here at CES. I have no clue if that's actually going to happen, but based on all of the details that we have surrounding it, it would make sense that this is the time that they would unveil this GPU, which we're expecting to be about 60% more powerful than what we have with the B580 if we just look at pure core count. It additionally has a significantly higher TDP and is likely to have 16 gigabytes of VRAM based on all of the rumors and the specifications that we're seeing. So it's pretty exciting, potentially B770 happening here at CES. I know a lot of you are highly anticipating this, waiting for this to happen, and so we'll hopefully see it actually pulled off. But another GPU that we're expecting to get announced today is MSI's Lightning Z that's going out for the RTX 5090. And in fact, it's already set a world record with overclock is pushing it to 3.75 gigahertz, which appears to be the fastest clock speed ever attained on a GPU. As you can see, this thing has two 16 pin power connectors. It all has a 40 phase power delivery setup. It appears to be a monster of a card. Who knows how many MSI is actually gonna make here, but they also showed it off that it added a 2,500 watt BIOS. Just absolutely crazy what they've been able to pull off with that GPU. But it's not the only thing we're expecting to get shown off here at CES. We're also expecting little uh, Android companion phones to get shown off with Clix announcing that they're going to be bringing out their smartphone. Now, in case you're not familiar, Clix is a physical keyboard company that made accessories that you attach your phone to. Kyler checked these out for his phone ages ago. We always had issues with it. The quality control just didn't appear to be there for the devices that we got our hands on. So I don't know how much I'm going to trust a phone, but it's not supposed to replace your primary device with them saying that it's the ultimate communication companion. Essentially, runs on Android, has a signal LED, so you can see all of the different notifications that are coming in based on the color, which is kind of neat, kind of a throwback to how things used to be. Four inch OLED screen, three and a half millimeter jack, expandable storage with a micro SD card slot, and it has a 50 megapixel rear camera, 24 megapixel front camera, has NFC for Google Pay, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and even comes with Qi 2 charging, one of the very few Android Android phones out there that actually has that. And turns out that they're only having it sold for $499 right now, but $399 if you choose to get the reservation right now, paid in full with a $199 deposit in case you don't want to actually purchase it right now. So it's about half the price of a flagship phone and they're not expecting that you use it as your main computing device. It's kind of supposed to be a companion, kind of like the Palm Palm that got announced recently. I don't know how exciting this is. Is this something that interests you? I saw this all over the place. I don't know if I'm gonna let Kyler pick one up for a review. We'll see how all of that plays out. But I want to pick one of these up for review. The Y Plasma laptop cooling situation that's gonna get unveiled here at CES. This is a similar idea to what we've seen with the Four Air Jet, which is solid state cooling. You try to cool a mobile device with no moving parts so that you can increase durability, potentially also increase battery life if it's efficient enough. And this plasma cooler uses dielectric barrier discharge plasma actuators in order to provide the cooling with them saying that it's only 17 dBA when it's providing all of that cooling. Whereas Forrest Airjet says that they're 21 dBA at 5.25 watts of heat removal. Now there has not been any posted heat removal numbers from the plasma cooling, nor has there been any power consumption numbers for the plasma cooling as well, which is going to dictate whether or not this gets implemented because the Fur air jet consumes one watt. If the plasma setup consumes a lot more than that, then you also are cooling your cooling situation. And who knows if that's going to be a good idea, but it's usually a good idea to listen to Reese when he tries to save you money on tech products. Yo, welcome back to you deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And here's your first deal of the day. Starting us off, we have the SteelSeries Arctis Nova One wired gaming headphones available as a prime exclusive for only $19.99 
99 cents, making it $40 off. For the next up, we have the HyperX Quadcast 2 Frost USB microphone, going for $94.99, making it $55 off. It is so hard to find a good white microphone if you want to include it in an all white setup. So here you go. And then lastly, we have the Fractal Design North Mid Tower ATX case, available in black or white for $115.99, making it $39 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, a lot of people thought that they got a killer deal on RAM over on New Year's with Corsair listing a 48 gigabyte kit of their Dominator Titanium RAM sets and canceled all of them. The price that was being sold for was $216 for a 48 gig kit, which in the current market should be closer to $600, $700 for these highly premium ones. Corsair is saying that they are canceling it because it was an internal systems error. They're not honoring this, especially because because they're stating that this was an out of stock RAM kit. This was not something that they were able to sell in the first place. And so anybody who tried to purchase it was trying to purchase something that they weren't gonna get. But that's not the only controversy that Corsair found themselves in when it came to pricing because one Redditor posting that they had an order canceled by Corsair for their $3,500 9900 X3D RTX 5080 gaming PC pre-built that Corsair stole in the Vengeance A5100. And after it was canceled, the guy went back to purchase it again and found Found that instead it was listed for $4,300 or about $800 more. Now, a lot of people speculating that this is Corsair jacking up the price due to RAM or something like that, or initially it didn't seem like Corsair was doing anything, but they resolved this and they even stated why this ended up happening. It was because of a holiday deals promotion. It was not because of RAM pricing. It was not them increasing the price of the PC. It just went back to its before sale pricing on January 1st and they gave the person a coupon for them to be able to purchase it. And the reason it got canceled in the first place was allegedly fraud detection. And that's why it was canceled. And the price increase had nothing to do with the actual cost of the system going up, just that a deal expired on it. But it looks like RTX 50 series might expire sometime soon with new reports coming out that people are not being able to buy these RTX 50 series GPUs with a German retailer saying that they cannot get their hands on anything besides RTX 5070s and even those are remarkably limited at five units per model for those cards. But if they wanted to pick up a 5070 Ti, 5080, or 5090, they are unable to do so because of undisclosed reasons, but it does appear to be something that's happening in multiple different regions. This is in Germany, which is affecting the European market. And then we've also seen some GP rationing over in Japan. So it's not quite clear exactly what's going on. We've seen reports of Nvidia potentially cutting production. We've seen reports of them raising pricing in regards to the VRAM shortage that could potentially be happening right now. And it's not clear if this is going to swing all the way to back in 2021, where we just didn't have access to anything and everything was costing three to five times what it should, or if this is just going to be everything's a little bit more expensive on the GPU side and on the RAM side, it's insanely more expensive. So we'll see what 2026 holds. We're going to keep you updated on everything that we find out about here at CES 2026. We've got a lot of show coverage to bring you guys this week, so stay tuned for all of that, and I'll be back with more of the hottest tech news later.